إن الحمد نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وقال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praise and glory be to Allah Rabbul Alameen who created us, who gave us the ability to speak he is the Lord of the oppressed, and He answers the door of the weak. Salam, peace and blessings be on final messenger, our leader, the last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and on his family, and on all the Muslims and their families <coughs> till the day of judgment. Allah Rabbul Alamin said, uh, O oh, you who believed, uh, fear Allah, and do not die the way He should be feared. Fear Allah the way He should be feared. And do not die except in the state of Islam or being a Muslim. And the next verse is Allah Rabbul Alamin saying, uh, O you who have believed, fear Allah the way he should be feared. And speak the truth or bear the truthfulness. It will lead you to the goodness. It will save you from the harm. And the way, this is the way, this is the way to obey Allah, the, to obey Islam. And who will do it? He will be the successful ones. Now, how to achieve the success? So this is basically uh, one of the lecture today is there are three gems. I, I took this uh, writing. Um, uh, I just came across this. This is from, it's an old writing from Abul Hassan Ali Nadwi. Uh, he is from 1993 to 1999. I actually go through all the kind of, uh, not a specific writing or something, but it is really kind of interesting because it's it covers the basic alhamdulillah may Allah Rabbul Alameen, uh, guide us from all the writings from all the scholars and uh, whatever they did may Allah accept all their uh, workings uh, he, uh, in fact uh, this is scholar he actually gathered his family members at his old age uh, all the family members and that is written in this particular book uh, that um, he told them three gems three gems, three beautiful uh, message. Uh, and he was saying that um, if someone can follow all these three gems, uh, he can continue to flourish. He'll grow in both worlds, in this world, definitely, and in hereafter, definitely. I mean, that's the main success. Plus, he'll be safe from destruction. That keeps the family members, everyone will be safe from the destruction. Okay, the first gem, <coughs> is this interesting one that never be the oppressor the first gem never be the oppressor rather be the oppressed one it's one of the one of the beautiful thing and when uh, i mean this even this message uh, when we come across we can realize that uh, if we are oppressed in the family in the uh, in the society in any form of oppression we should not be sad, basically. La ta'adhan, one of the verse of Quran, la ta'adhan, don't be sad. Uh, even when the uh, Muslims was were defeated, in uh, almost defeated in the battle of Uhud, then the verse of Quran was revealed, la ta'adhan. 
uh, that inna Allah ma'ana that don't be sad indeed Allah is with you right so this is one of the beautiful message that we should never be depressed we should never be sad and the sadness is not with the Muslim basically Muslims should not be sad that's why Prophet Muhammad said beautifully that uh, uh, that the uh, affairs of the Muslims are amazing the affairs of the Muslims are amazing. This is the message of Prophet Muhammad That whenever good times comes in, then uh, he send gratitude. He give thanks to Allah. And whenever the bad time comes in, he is having the patience, right? He hears the patience and both are good. So sending thanks to Allah uh, is good. And uh, having patience in the bad time is also good. In both times, they are getting the rewards in both times they are getting the rewards and this is the this is the fruit this is the result that only be achieved by the believers this is not for the disbelievers or any people in this world because the materialist people the disbelievers this world is everything basically uh, so the first gem is never be the oppressor rather be the oppressed one uh, this is an extremely fundamental piece of advice and the foundational pillar for the existence of peaceful families and societies. It is, after all, among the most salient features of none other than Rasulullah that he never oppressed anyone, though he was oppressed by many. Instead, he forgave those who oppressed him and never took revenge for his personal self. Now this advice, particular advice, was really interesting is that uh, Prophet Muhammad endured whatever difficulties came upon him and didn't oppress anyone. And this trait among many others was the direct result of the excellent nurturing of the mother or father, basically. Uh, and that actually happens to this, to this Maulana is that uh, he was saying in his book that from the time I was a little child, my mother instilled me this quality to accept and acknowledge any mistake. And that we basically we can apply to our children. It was also impressed upon me to immediately apologize and seek the pardon of seniors or juniors if I have made an error. So it was due to, the, due to this training that I was never prepared to take on a fight if ever I exceeded the limits, especially with regard to any family person, servant, or the child of any servant. She would immediately make me apologize and seek forgiveness. Now he actually mentioned one story is that once he was a child and he hit a uh, child of, of the maid. He hit the child of the maid at home. So as soon as his mother was informed, she immediately called the Maulana and she was a, he was a child baby, a boy. And the child whom he had hit, she then instructed the child that you hit him too. So take the revenge, you hit him too because he hit you uh, without any reason. Hit him now in front of me. Mother was teaching the child. This is one of the a difficult thing but this is needed the poor child was overawed and didn't have the courage to hit the maulana his mother then took the hand of the maid's child and hit the maulana with it she then instructed the maulana to also seek the child's forgiveness after this incident in his childhood he never deliberately caused any inconvenience to anyone any problem to anyone any harm to anyone it was such an exam exemplary training that instilled in this Maulana that he, this is the, the first gem of lesson is that never be the oppressor, rather be the oppressed one. So first gem to flourish someone. Okay, now the second gem, the second gem is <clears throat> refrain from the forbidden wealth very basic but these are the foundation basically refrain from the forbidden wealth restrain yourself from even the doubtful wealth 
restrain yourself even <coughs> from the doubtful wealth now he was sharing the summary of the study of history and explaining the factors which is the root cause of rise and fall of the families and the communities now he was saying that uh, this is an interesting story that when i was a little child we had a maid who did take care of me as well she used to sit me in her lap and feed me one day during an uh, a time they went to a house for some food where some food was being served and which was actually an offering made on the third day after passing away of some person uh, being a very poor woman she sat there to take the food now i was a little child he was saying i was a little child and i also extended my hand to take the food but that was not for me basically and but the maid stopped him told that do not eat this food it is not for you so this is a very simple lesson even that wealth of food is basically uh, not 100% kind of you know um, halal basically uh, so he she was saying that you do not eat this food this is not for you this is a very simple trivial example basically but we come across many common examples of many bad situations of taking someone's wealth basically uh, now the, the the side note is that the food of offerings on the graves it was again another kind of not really you know good <laughs> not a kind of pure food because it's for the graves it's, it's the shirk is involved on that in the name of the saints etc uh, which is imper imper impermissible so uh, that was second reason basically so she he didn't actually stretch his hand to take the food subhanallah that was the caliber of even the maid of that time the reaction is also evidence of the degree the cause generally exercised with regard to halal and haram to every person so this is one of the example that uh, is a doubtful wealth uh, starting from the doubtful food so few examples are for example if we get any food or any wealth uh, from bribery basically if someone gives a bribe to do some work this is a completely haram so second gem is that is stay from the haram sustenance uh, another is stealing if i take the take the wealth of someone by stealing uh, looting money by power if i loot public money or people's money by power by oppressing him now if we think the very example that shaitan actually try us to involve in a in a in a, in a greater extent at present even from the very beginning is the taking the unlawful property of the relatives <laughs> and that is i mean if we if we really think closely that probably many believers will be stuck on the day of judgment when they took <coughs> the brother's wealth unlawfully when they distribute the wealth among the brothers and sisters how many families really give the property to the sisters i mean we can come across many examples many practical examples and how many are, are really distributing the wealth among the brothers properly or whatever Allah Rabbul Alam instructed us to do how many of us really including me how many of us even in future this is a real great trial because shaitan probably knows that this person is doing all the ibadah properly uh, properly but if he can be misguided at his end a at his you know end of the age kind of thing uh, not to distribute the property properly he will be stuck he will be stuck and we know that on the pool sirat on the bridge uh, if someone didn't distribute it properly that will be asked that brother or sister will ask where is my wealth then all his good deeds needs to be returned because that's the only payment option on that particular moment so we should be really very careful and uh, if we have done it i mean we should try to resolve that because there is no barak on that if i steal the money from the lawful way not the from the uh, uh, i mean not from the lawful way uh, that sustenance will not give the blessings to my children whatever i do on those children allah Rabbul Alamin knows the best so this is basically the second gem of advice the first one is never be the oppressor rather be the oppressed one 
And another uh, side note came regarding the oppressed one. One of the scholars saying beautifully that if you are oppressed one, uh, your reward will start immediately when you are put into the grave. When you are an oppressed one, your reward will start immediately when you are put into the grave. And if you are an oppressor one, your punishment will start immediately after you put into the grave. This is so powerful message. May Allah Rabbul Alameen accept us. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, as salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al Mursaleen, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa salim. Therefore, the first gem was never be the oppressor, rather be the oppressed one. And the second gem of advice was refrain from the forbidden wealth. Wealth achieved from stealing, wealth achieved from looting by uh, power, uh, by unlawful way. Uh, unlawfully from the inheritance and whatever means or by stealing by looting or whatever now the last gem is is really interesting is that <coughs> treat your relatives well now, another difficult most of the cases treat your relatives well and the relatives the first category is blood relatives basically who are connected by the bloods uh, even though they behave indifferently this is another good advice. Treat your relatives well, even though they behave indifferently. However painful it may be, always be good to them. Whatever painful it may be, always be good to them. And if we reflect, it is really difficult, including me. I mean, sometimes when we get some bad behavior treatment from one of the relatives, if he's a, he or she is a blood relative, then we need to keep in touch, irrespective of our ego, our mental issues or any, any obstacles, whatever can come across, or the obstacle from the family or other things. Uh, <clears throat> now, on many occasions, our Maulana is saying that on many occasions, if a relative comes to me, he was saying, and if he spoke harshly, his general rule is that he would send some gift, some sweet to him. That was his norm, actually. So this is advice from him. So if any relative, part of talking about the relatives, talk harshly, he would send gifts. Some people actually joked about it, that if anyone wanted to eat some sweets, he should say some bad words to, the, to him. That was one of the... He said, so on one occasion, a relative spoke harshly to him and he placed a hundred rupees in an envelope and together with a set of clothing, presented it to the person who spoke harshly to him. So this practice is basically, if we go back, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, uh, one of the famous Imam uh, from Iraq, he was saying one of the beautiful story is that he was one of the true lover of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said that a neighbor who used to regularly abuse him verbally, the day the neighbor had abused him, Imam would send him a gift. Talking about Imam Abu Hanifa, he would send a gift. So after many days had passed in this manner, and after having received many gifts from the Imam, the neighbor felt that the Imam had great affection for him. He therefore stopped abusing. So he just stopped abusing to the Imam. Uh, however, he noticed that the gifts had also stopped coming. Hence he came to the Imam Abu Hanifa and asked, what type of recompense is this? As long as I abused you, you sent me gifts. When I stopped abusing you, you stopped sending me gifts. So the Imam Abu Hanifa replied, brother, as long as you abused me, I made sabr. I made sabr, exercised patience. Thus, you were actually building my paradise for me. So, you were actually building my paradise for me by giving uh, me the occasion of making sabr and thereby enabling me to attain the great rewards. Therefore, in return, I was happy to give you some worldly benefit as a gift. 
because you are building my here after so i am giving you some gift but when you stopped building my paradise i stopped your worldly benefit <laughs> what an amazing response allah akbar so look at their mindset look at the mindset of abu hanifa and similar scholars if only we develop the same mindset in whatever form even close to them uh, we will also enjoy the peace within ourselves and spread peace and happiness around us as well that is the only way to happiness so th- this is interesting story that the first story is talking about the relatives and imam abu hanifa this story is talking about the neighbors and we have lot of neighbors around so if we can do that that should be one starting point <coughs> basically may allah bulal amin grant us knowledge and tawfiq aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiruhu ala kulli shay'in qadir innallaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna 'ala an-nabi ya ayyuhallazina amanu sallu 'alayhi wa sallimu taslima allahumma salli 'ala sayyidina maulana muhammad wa 'ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallim rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina azaban nar rabbir hamhuma kama rabbayani saghira rabbir hamhuma kama rabbayani saghira Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyyatina qurrata a'yun waj'alna lil muttaqina imama Rabbana innaka man tudkhilin nar fa qad akhzaytahu wa ma lizzalimina min ansar ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين ഹയാല حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله